this is just the story. The case is the story of uh, the mission that we had to do uh, over Bolivia uh, last year, is in September, in a particular case, which is the study of moon fields. So, uh, what are moon fields? It's this kind of uh, landscape that you have uh, on the top photo. Uh, it's, uh, it can be found uh, in, Af in Africa, in tropical zone, uh, when the land is flooded with water um, once a year. And we can see this kind of small months where millions of them are spread on the landscape uh, sometimes. And it's very uh, interesting to study wh what it is. So um, the scientific question is, how, did the, uh, what, uh, uh, how can appear this kind of months? Uh, they are uh, around two meters in diameters and uh, half meter high, something like that. What are the mechanisms of the re regularity of this uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, landscape? And why are they still there? Um, with the, the erosion, uh, the erosion is very uh, efficient and they are still there. Uh, they are abandoned sometimes um, during a uh, uh, lot, lot of, uh, a big period of time and they are still there, so why? Um, a clue of this is the fact that there are some uh, insects, animals in the, in the soils that are uh, interested at gathering the soils and putting it in top of the months. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a clue for the conservation. So uh, I go on. Um, the place where we're supposed to go is in Bolivia. Bolivia is uh, known uh, with the highest uh, uh, capital in the world, which is uh, around uh, 400 meters high. But um, the main place in Bolivia is very flat. No, all the, the north of the land, is, uh, which is close to Brazil, is very low and very flat. So this is where we were supposed to go. If we zoom, we have a small village named Santa Rosa in the Beni region of uh, Bolivia. And uh, we selected with Google Earth uh, several places uh, their surface, each surface is around one square kilometer or lower. And we had to spend two weeks in this place to make the cartography with the leader and the foot and photos. So this is the appearance of uh, each site. You know, you can see the mounts. Some are, are made by humans, some are made by uh, animals. And we have to gather precise uh, data sets to, to go on with the study of these kind of things. So uh, it, this is not the first time we were involved in such a survey. Um, several years ago, we went to Bolivia. Uh, no, it was in uh, 214. And uh, we used this kind of UAV, which uh, a huge paraglider, very easy to use. Uh, I was there for, for it. And it's very to use with a single pilot and operator. And I, I take some photographic, it's a very good uh, uh, vector for cartography with uh, RGB views. It's very simple. But yet the trajectory is very poor. There is no meaning to uh, drive it automatically. So it's just a flying camera. Things can be done, like this mosaic that you can see. But this is, uh, uh, we can't have uh, three-dimensional data and very accurate data. So we decided this time to use two UAVs. One uh, carrying an uh, RGB camera and one with the LiDAR. So they are like the, the drone that you saw yesterday uh, on the power lines. And OK, we were ready with these two uh, UAVs, two pilots, and ready to go. And we had one point which is important is that uh, this is electrical. Power, uh, it's electrical, so we need some batteries. We have 25 kilos of batteries and um, maybe uh, 15 batteries to carry uh, uh, on, the, on the fields and to take to France, to Bolivia. And this is a very big problem with the regulations. Uh, it's impossible to have a lot of battery in the, in the planes. So we had to study this uh, particular point. And we sprayed all the battery with all the team uh, getting to Bolivia. We were around, uh, I think, uh, five people from coming to France to, um, to Bolivia, and everyone had three or four batteries in his uh, luggages. 
So we get to La Paz, and at that point, there was, there was a very critical moment when uh, we reach this airport, which is very high. Michael, which was one of the pilots, uh, the pilot of the drone, get very sick with uh, the hypoxy uh, at this altitude. And he, he was, uh, uh, at, the t at that time, he was thinking of going back to France with his uh, insurance. He was around, uh, about to take his phone for the assurance to get back and I said uh, because he, it was impossible for him to eat or drink something. So uh, at the last moment I, I proposed him just a little jab of Coca-Cola and it works. <laughs> no, two hours, uh, in two hours he was, he was good. And we have another problem is that um, because uh, of a little fail in, uh, in the preparation we, didn't, we did not have the, the good papers to go to the custom with the UAVs. That was the problem. So we were supposed to have, uh, to have a small, very uh, small transit in La Paz, but it takes us two days to get the authorization. So it was really complicated, a nightmare. So we, really, uh, so we finally get to Santa Rosa and prepare the flight. So this is just two views to show the difference between how we make the we prepare the flights and how it's made with photographic uh, with the photos and the leader. So for the photos, it's quite simple. Uh, there is some very well known relation linking the camera, the high, uh, the, geome the geometry of the flight. So we can have a sheet which calculates uh, things. So we start from the ground sampling that we want. We know which camera we have, we've got on the UAV and all the, the rest is automatic. So we can have, uh, pardon. we can have the flying altitude, we can have the distance between the, the flight lines and between the centers of the photography and, and so on. And with the motion blur, we can have the speed that we need uh, that we need uh, to, to not exceed. And so we can have the flight time. And this is one of the most important data that we need to prepare the flights uh, because the autonomy of the, the UAV is around maybe uh, uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes, not more, because we, we want to have a lot of security with this. So. Uh, we have to split when we have a big uh, surface, for an example, one kilometer, which is quite big for uh, the maple. Uh, we have to split the flight in three flights. You know? And for, the, for the, the LiDAR, it's quite simple. We have just one altitude, which is good for the, the accuracy, around 70 meters. Uh, fixed speeds of uh, quite low uh, distance, between the flight sign is fixed too, and it's the same for, uh, for every flight. And uh, the difference is that we, we don't need a lot of uh, waypoints, you know, it's very simple because it's a sort of push broom acquisition with just simple points. So we were ready with no problems, but, uh, but uh, yes, there are another problem. Uh, before we start the flights, we realized that there was a failure on the engine of one uh, uh, UAV. Uh, the UAV carrying the, the small camera uh, failed and we could not repair it uh, at that place. So you, we have to think of an adaptation. Um, so we, we saw the, the LiDAR, the, the, the camera, and uh, we decide to drill a hole in the in the in the leader case. It was a very difficult decision to take. <laughs> we had to think about it uh, several seconds. <laughs> so we did it, and you have I, we don't have good photos of this assembly, but you can see a small camera fixed on the on the leader, and we we did this, and it worked. Uh, very good, uh, and we had to mix the way we do, we do the flight plans between the two uh, logics that we have. 
And this, uh, this event was good for us because the productivity was better. We, we, uh, we divide by two the number of flights that we had to do. That was good. So just for the fun, the kind of vehicle that we have there, I had a video, but uh, no time to show you another time. <laughs> it's very, it's like a merry go you know? And here you have uh, a military, uh, military, uh, a military, a Bolivian military was uh, following us every time we were uh, on, uh, on Bolivia. So uh, to just survey what we were doing. So um, after this point, it was just, I, I would say, business as usual. Uh, we have a very good pilot, Michael, which is here. Uh, he's very experienced and uh, uh, we did a lot, uh, lot of good flights with him, but the condition was very, very rough, you know. Um, some stress, uh, because it's quite technical, and um, a fail in this condition is, uh, is not good. Uh, heat, sun, dust, shocks, vibrations, a lot of things uh, got, that could be problems. And uh, we realized that uh, the, the, the LiDAR and the UAVs are far more resistant than us, you know. They work very good. So we made uh, all, uh, uh, a big part of the flight that we, are, uh, we plan to do. They were in seven weeks, seven sites, with this t new twin sensor. And the results are classical, you know, we, we can do some two centimeters RGB mosaic that, what, what, that was made with uh, uh, something like, uh, you know, uh, photo scan, uh, this one, just as a sample. And uh, just to focus on one particular site, <coughs> which is interesting, uh, on this site, each month is surrounded by a small tree so it's the case where we can show how the leader is good for. So um, we made a very low altitude uh, <coughs> flight plan. This is not the flight plan, this is the, the result of the flight. So you, you can see the difference between uh, straight uh, theoretical, theoretical lines that we wanted to do and the real shape of the flights we did this is very small, and this is, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, 100 meters long here. It's very small for UAV flight. So you can see the difference, and uh, this is caused by a GPS incertainty and wind gusts, th things like that. But uh, the results were not too bad. This, it's not a surprise to see that uh, in this RGB um, 3D model, there is nothing to see because you see just the top of the tree, and it's just, that is just uh, uh, what uh, is done by the LiDAR. But, uh, it's, uh, you, you may know uh, the advantages of this. Is that you can see the, the vegetation, we move and get in, in information of, uh, the, of the, the months, and uh, this is what we wanted to do. So we have a, a huge amount of data, uh, like that one, that are uh, ready to be processed by the scientists. So we, we came back with, with all these uh, uh, data and they are actually being processed uh, to, uh, to learn more about this, uh, this kind of uh, landscape. And my conclusion, maybe if there, there are many things to, to say about that kind of experience, but my conclusion is uh, flying a drone is uh, more than pushing a button. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I think a lot of people f uh, f think that it's quite easy, <coughs> but uh, you need some, uh, some experience to, to, to succeed in that kind of uh, flights. You know? Okay. <laughs>